Hello, everybody. My name is Katie Harrington. I actually just finished up grad school here at Johns Hopkins University. And today I'm going to be telling you about uh, one of the papers that we just put out called the Variable Delay Polarization Modulators for the Class Telescopes. So CLASS is a four-telescope array that's down in the Atacama Desert in Chile. And we're looking at uh, observing both inflation and reionization, which are two periods in the yearly universe, um, through their polarization in the cosmic microwave background. Uh, this photo right here is of our first telescope, our Q-band telescope, that's been down there and observing for about two years. And recently, this spring, we actually put out our second telescope, which is the W-band telescope, which has just started observing with the Q-band. So to start off, just a little bit of background on the science goals for the class telescopes. One, the first period of the yearly universe that we're looking at explaining is this period called inflation. This is a period of super exponential expansion in the early universe, um, where the universe goes from something like the size of an atom to the size of a galaxy, or larger in a very, very short period of time. Uh, it's a predicted era right now. We're looking for evidence that it occurred, but we like this type of um, expansion in the early universe because it explains a lot of things we see today. So we see a very flat and homogeneous universe, and these sorts of properties are explained by inflation. Uh, so we're really interested in finding out if this type of era occurred. The other era that we're looking at is reionization. This is when the first stars and galaxies in the universe turned on and started emitting ionizing photons into the, Earth, into the universe. And this took a bunch of all the neutral hydrogen that was there at the time and ionized it. So class is actually looking for both of these periods through the polarization in the cosmic microwave background. Um, when both of these eras have um, polarization signals that are inside the CMB from um, photons scattering off of electrons inside of quadrupole moments. And what this does is it just creates specific patterns. And how these patterns change across the sky helps us observe evidence of these types of uh, eras in the early universe. This measurement is quite difficult because the level of these signals is very, very small. The signal from inflation, you could imagine trying to map nano-Kelvin differences in temperature as the sky rotates, which is crazy. And we have to actually be able to compare the level of the polarization from this side to this side and their shapes and patterns as, um, across the sky. So this is a quite difficult measurement to make with our telescopes. And the uh, Variable Delay Polarization Modulators, or the VPMs, are an instrument we're going to use to help us make this measurement. So a VPM is a wire grid in front of a movable mirror. You can see it up in the corner of the screen right there. And the idea here is that uh, electric fields that are parallel to the wires bounce off the wires, and then electric fields that are perpendicular to the wires go through, get an extra phase delay as they hit the mirror, and then come back out and recombine with the other polarization state. And when you kind of follow this through, uh, what this does is it actually takes linear polarization, changes it into circular polarization, and back as the mirror moves, as the distance between the mirror and the grid um, changes. Now, the sky, um, we don't expect it to have significant circular polarization. We don't expect this cosmic microwave background or any of the galactic signals um, on large angular scales to have circular polarization. So in effect, what the VPM was going to do is it's going to turn our, our signal, our, the linear polarized signal we're looking for, on and off 10 times a second. Because we're going to move this mirror at 10 hertz, so 10 times a second. Um, and, what, and we take this VPM and we stick it up as the very first optical instrument of our telescope. This means that the VPM encodes a modulated signal uh, at the very beginning of the optical chain. And this is really great because um, Mirrors, lenses, filters, all of these things have a property called um, instrument polarization, where they take temperature, or like so unpolarized signal comes in, and then polarized signal comes out. And so these are, this is a very small effect, but when you're looking for nano-Kelvin, this effect is important. And so we actually create this modulation right in, as the very first thing in the telescope so that anything that changes it later on just doesn't matter because it's not modulated. And so what this little schematic here in the bottom shows is that as you have an overall drift in signal, so that could be noise from your atmosphere or your cryostat slightly changing temperatures or anything like that, the modulated signal, which is just the polarization that we care about, is just turning on and off. And so we can look um, and lock in directly at that signal 
uh, in order to actually pull out the polarization from the sky without having to deal with a lot of instrument systematics or um, instabilities in the sky uh, from, say, the atmosphere. Uh, this effect is actually very similar to what's done with AM radio. Uh, the way that that signal is modulated is identical to this one, except we're doing it with optics and polarization, and AM radio does it with like talk shows. <laughs> so we really like this VPM idea, and we really need it in our telescopes, and so we've built them. Uh, so what's showing here is kind of a schematic design of the VPM, along with a photo of the W-band VPM um, down at, our, at the site, actually, in a high bay. So as I had explained, the VPM is a wire grid in front of a movable mirror. So you kind of really need two things to get this VPM going. You need a wire grid, and you need a mirror that can move. Um, and it needs to move back and forth. The Q-band VPM has to move over um, a millimeter and a half back and forth at 10 times a second. And you need to do that while the mirror and the wire grid stay super parallel to each other because you don't want the mirror looking one direction and the grid looking the other. They have to be aligned together. So to move the mirror, we actually use um, these things that are called rotary cross blade flexures. So we actually use the bending of metal to create a spring that we can control and engineer to the exact parameters that we want. So this is kind of shown with these little X's here. Those are a uh, design of these uh, cross blade flexures. And so as you put a force on them, you actually get a rotation um, out. And then you actually build these up into a square. And you can get a horizontal translation. And then you can choose the parameters and the dimensions of each part of the spring to create translation um, while not moving at all in any of the other directions that we don't want the, VPM to, the mirror to move. In addition to that, we need our grids. So um, these grids are made up of copper-plated tungsten wire. Uh, they're two thousandths of an inch in diameter, so 50 microns in diameter. They are tungsten because we need it to be very strong and have a lot of tensile strength. And that's the best uh, material that can be made into wires for those properties. However, they're still two thousandths of an inch in diameter, and they kind of feel like hair, and they break like hair as we try to make these grids. Now, these, these wires are spaced about 150 microns apart across 62 centimeters. We actually take this big cylinder that has the dimensions we want, wrap the wires around it, glue them down, and then try to unwrap it. And it's fun. Um, but so this photo in the top right over here is showing a grid that's complete. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of springs on both sides of the wires. That's because we actually have to tension the wires up to almost half their breaking strength so that they can't vibrate as um, the mirror moves behind it. So their natural resonance frequencies are raised are, um, above the uh, modulation frequency by almost an order of magnitude, over, by over an order of magnitude. Uh, and so once you have this wire grid, you need to align it to the mirror so that everything stays nice and parallel. And we do this with this XY gantry setup that we've built here at Hopkins, where you actually take a microscope, move it across the surface of the grid, and measure the distances between the grid and the mirror back and forth at all these different places. So then you can actually figure out what, how they're aligned and then move the, the wire grid into alignment with the mirror. So now when we've done all of that, we have our VPM. I'm going to show you it in action. OK, so this is our VPM. This is actually the W-band VPM at the class site. And so you can see it just barely vibrating. It's actually quite hard to see. And yeah, so uh, we've built these VPMs. Two of them have been up at the site. The Q-band VPM has actually done uh, 350 million uh, oscillations in the past two years as it's been observing as the Q-band telescope has been observing the CMB. And the W-band just started, so it's not quite that far, but it's, it's going to catch up pretty soon. So thanks. <laughs>